has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory. Let the land and seas rejoice. For the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man. And your cry of love rings out across the land. Yet you left the gaze of angels, came to seek and save the lost, and exchanged the joy of heaven for the anguish of a cross. With the prayer you fed the hungry, with the word you stilled the sea, yet how silently you suffered that the guilty may go free. With a shout you rose victorious, wresting victory from the grave, and descended into heaven, leading captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your own, from each tribe and tongue and nation, you are leading sinners home. You're the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We sing the first four stanzas of hymn 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. As is traditional in the Easter season, the Old Testament reading is rather from the book of Acts. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, 
stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thaudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day, in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We speak together the gradual. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now have a children's message from our teacher, Alyssa Leakey. All right, good morning, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you guys today. It's very different, but I'm glad to be with you all today. So today we're gonna to talk about things that are unbelievable, things that you wouldn't know were true, but somebody tells you that they are. There's a whole series of books. There's the Guinness Book of World Records, there's Ripley's Believe It or Not, and it's all about the strangest things, but they're actually true. So I'm gonna give you some examples this morning of some of the things that are unbelievable, but true. There is a man named James Cook who once had a chicken that laid a perfectly square egg. Now, I've seen white eggs, I've seen brown eggs, maybe even spotted eggs, but I have never seen a square egg. I feel like I'd have to see that to know if it was true. There is a girl named Joanne Barnes, and she was 15 years old from California, and she once swung a bunch of hula hoops. Have you ever swung a hula hoop around your waist before? Now, I struggle with one sometimes, but do you know how many hula hoops she could sway around her hips? Do you think it was five? Mm -mm. Think it was 10? No, maybe 12? Mm -mm. She swung 68 hula hoops at the same time. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'd have to see that to believe that. That's a lot of hula hoops. There's one more. I'll bet that you did not know. How long do you think the world's biggest hot dog was? Hmm, maybe a foot? I've seen a foot long hot dog. No, nope, that's not the biggest. Maybe two feet? That seems a bit much. That's a big meal. Well, the longest hot dog is three thousand feet long and it weighed 885 pounds and it took 103 butchers to carry it that's a lot of hot dog do you think you believe that i think i'd have to see that that's a big hot dog <clears throat> well this book is full of all kinds of different things that are unbelievable to hear about and you feel like you have to see them but they're true that's the same in our bible story today so the day that Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared to his disciples and he said, here I am, I have risen. But you know what, there was one disciple that wasn't there and his name was Thomas. So he came back to the house later that day and the disciples were like, Thomas, you will never believe the most amazing thing happened, Jesus was here. And Thomas looks at him and he goes, I don't know guys, until I touch the nail marks in his hand and the piercing in his side, I don't think I can believe that. So a week goes by and Thomas saw Jesus. Jesus came to him and said, Thomas, touch the nail parks in my hand. Touch the wound in my side. I am here. And he said, blessed are you. Because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen me and yet still believe. Friends, we are those that are blessed because we believe in Jesus. Jesus is real, but have we seen him? We may not have seen him in person, but we have seen his works that he does for us each day. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Help us to always keep you in our sights. Help us to always remember that you are here with us and that you have died for us and forgiven us all of our sins. Help our faith to be strong in you so that we can do your good works each and every day. In your name we pray, amen. Things hurt, nothing 
grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You thought of what new power the human voice has? We don't just type things anymore. We talk to our devices, and they do what we tell them to. Or at least they're supposed to work that way. It's the sort of thing that was science fiction not too many years ago. Do you remember when computers worked on punched cards? And at that time, we were punching out those cards, and there on the TV was Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise speaking to their computer. Now I can talk to mine. I can make phone calls from my car simply telling it who I want to talk to. I can read my sermons into the computer and it types it out because I'm still stuck writing them on yellow pads. But by voice, I can get caught up. Voice activation and voice command, they're the big thing these days. Well, the human voice has always been able to have an effect, but God's voice has real power. The reading today is about the power of Jesus' voice. On this second Sunday of Easter, the risen Lord Jesus comes to you and to me to speak his peace into our hearts so that we may speak that peace into the world. This is what we will read this morning in the Gospel. After Mary and the other women told Jesus' disciples that they had seen the Lord, the disciples did not really believe. And by that evening, the disciples were behind locked doors, afraid of who might be looking for them. This is the church at its absolute worst. Hunkered down, huddled together, letting fear rather than faith control their every thought and action. Then suddenly, Jesus comes and stands among them. John says the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. But in their joy, not one of them apologizes for his behavior over those days. No one says he's sorry or that he could have done better or they should have known better. Well, perhaps part of the reason they didn't is because they don't get the chance. Instead, it's Jesus who speaks the first word. And just as was the case when the sound of God's voice brought creation into existence, the sound of Jesus' voice brings what it says. Peace be with you. He says those words and there is peace. Peace. This was the whole point of what Jesus had been going through. His death on the cross was to establish peace between God and man, to reestablish that relationship that had been shattered when we first sinned. The sin causes separation and it causes conflict. In sin, we live our lives for ourselves, not for others. In sin, we cannot be in harmony, our will gladly yielding to others. In sin, we could never be with God because His holiness cannot be in relationship with unholiness. But by taking our sin to the cross, Christ removed the separation and reconciled us to God, 
bringing us back into peace with him. And that whole scene repeats a week later when Thomas is with the disciples. The doors are locked again, but Jesus comes again. He speaks the same word, peace be with you. Then rather than scolding, Jesus encourages Thomas to touch and to see his wounds and then says, do not disbelieve, but believe. Even though almost 2,000 years have passed since that first Easter evening, the church still struggles to get out from behind locked doors and into the world. While we in America might not fear crucifixion, there are many threats in the 20th century as there were in the first century. The temptation is to focus all our attention on those threats and let fear paralyze us. The text from John 20 is not about how the world locks its doors to the gospel, but how the church locks itself away from the world. Now the irony of the whole thing is that the disciples locked those doors and hid away, but they were hiding from someone who wasn't looking for them. They were worried about soldiers knocking on doors, looking to crucify them. But we don't hear that that ever happened. They were hiding away from people who might ridicule them for following a Messiah that was crucified. But there's no record of that happening either. The one they were locking out was Jesus. They locked out the word he had so clearly spoken to them about dying and rising again. And in locking out that word, they locked out Jesus. When fear becomes our focus, we fall into the same trap. We lock out God's word. We lock out the Lord who time and again tells his church, do not be afraid. This is Jesus' word to you this second Sunday of Easter. Peace be with you. Peace, your sin is forgiven. Do not fear the world, for I have overcome the world. Peace be with you. That word comes to you and to me today with exactly the same power as it came to those first disciples on that first Easter and to Thomas a week later. And his word delivers what it says. In his word, Jesus comes among us today and we experience the power of his voice. He doesn't just tell us about peace, but he actually speaks peace to you and to me. Jesus spoke his peace to you in the waters of your baptism, where you were joined to his death and to his resurrection, and you died to sin and rose to new life. That peace is spoken to you every time you return in repentance to your baptism. And he says to you, through your pastor, I forgive you all your sins. That peace is spoken to you the Lord's table, where in, with, and under bread and wine, he comes to feed you his very body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins and to lift you from your fears. There his voice speaks peace. This is for you, he says. 
for the forgiveness of your sins. And we rise from the table at peace. Then our Lord sends us into the world. As the Father sent me, even so I am sending you. But we do not go empty-handed. Jesus breathed his Holy Spirit upon his disciples, and to his church he hands the keys to the kingdom of heaven. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. And if you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. And with that, we, like those first disciples, are sent into the world with the voice of peace. Through our voice, he himself speaks, peace be with you. You see, long before there was voice activation, there was the risen Lord Jesus, speaking to and through people like you and me, so that all who are locked behind the doors of fear hear his words, peace be with you. And now, peace be with you, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And at this point in the services, when we would normally bring the offering forward, and just a note uh, that you can continue to uh, offer your gifts uh, via the website uh, just uh, after the service. You can find the button there uh, if you are so inclined. And we respond to God's declaration of peace in the gospel by confessing together our faith using those ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and gracious presence. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, bestow upon your church your Holy Spirit, and all the gifts that come down from on high. Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully and ears to hear your word proclaimed. Give us boldness in our witness before the world and courage to speak your name without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. Keep your church from following the winds of change and make her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away from your word and to restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders in the paths of peace and justice. Bless us with wise, faithful, and just leaders who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that in our neighborhoods and communities we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, and to those to whom death draws near. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will, and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, be with those who grieve the loss of those whom they love. Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting life to all who die in Christ. Deliver us from the distractions of things that do not matter, that we may focus on the needful things of your word and sacraments, and so be found faithful when our Lord returns in his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth, with the fruits of our honest labors, and with a kind and generous heart. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices, along with the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our gratitude and thanksgiving. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of the poor, that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, give harmony and unity to your people both in our various vocations before the world and in our common life in this congregation. Help us look forward to the day when we receive with repentance and joy the gift of Christ's body and blood in this blessed communion, that we may be strengthened in faith and enjoy the gift of a clear conscience through the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our service this morning concludes with hymn number 805, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs>